I didn't even know this thing existed, and now I'm kind of obsessed with it. This is the Boss GS10. Started out with a clean twin amp setting from the Attic Amps patch where I dialed up the chorus and the reverb a little bit. Then you heard that reverse sustain effect. That was the meltdown patch, which uses the slow gear effect. Plus I added in a little more chorus and reverb. The crunch guitar comes from the natural crunch setting, which is a T amp, allegedly a Hughes and Kettner tri amp clean setting, and I used an overdrive pedal effect in there as well. For the last guitar, I use the slice it up patch. That's the slicer effect coupled with some delay. And then for the bass, that's the enhanced patch with the session amp setting, which models the SWR SM400. Think of this as everything that you would do in a software amp sim today, but from 2003 and not in a computer. It's got models of marshals and fenders and mesas and more. There's effects like chorus delay, overdrive, distortion, pitch shifters, tremolo. Uh, there's MIDI in and out. And to get started, you just plug right in and use the big wheel right here to flip through the presets. And there is a wide range of presets. <laughs>
Each preset has a bunch of effects which might fit that theme, as well as three amps which you can switch between with these buttons right here, A, B, and C. So maybe a clean, a crunch, and a lead, or three different flavors of clean if you want. And you can see right up here, you get the standard assortment of effects that nobody should ever leave home without. There's not a ton of variety in there. Delay is just single pan and stereo. There's no dual head tape setting or even a tape setting. It's just plain old digital delay. <laughs> Compressor is either on or off, and chorus is just mono, stereo, or the other stereo, which synthesizes the spatial characteristics of the direct sound and the effect sound. All right, so you won't find Dimension or CE1 in here. We've got some variety in the reverb though. We've got ambience, hall, room, and plate, but they went all out in the OD distortion area. Look at the options here. Lots and lots and lots of distortions. It's too bad most of them sound like angry bees with slightly different EQ curves. All right, so at least the Metal Zone setting kind of rips. This is basically the same offering as you find in the OD20, with a couple of exceptions. Anyway, those are the main effects, which are always available. We've also got these islands of misfit effects down here, and this is where the phasers, flangers, and ring modulators live. <laughs> On the effects, it's probably like you expected. The time-based effects sound pretty good, but the modeling of things like drive, filters, and tonal effects, you can only push those so far before the cracks start to show. And this also applies to the amp simulators. Here's a few of those models to consider.
So yeah, of the 35 amp models in here, there's really only a few that I would ever actually consider using, and they tend to be on the cleaner side of things. The thing to remember about Boss, though, is that everything they put out is the most cutting-edge, advanced modeling technology on the face of the planet until the next thing comes out. So this technology might have been impressive, even if it didn't sound perfect. I think that's pretty fair to say. So you take that cutting edge technology, COSM, and you implement it in this sleek rack interface for the pro touring musician, and that's the GT Pro. Not gonna lie, that thing still looks pretty sweet. Or put it in a floorboard unit for your bar band weekend warriors, you've got the GT8. I had one of those back in my Holiday Inn cover band days. Solid piece of gear. For the home studio enthusiast, you can get Cosm modeling and multi-track recorder, maybe even a CD burner that's in the BR Digital Studios. And for those of us who are just all about the effects, that's the ME50 and the ME50B. The GS10, as the kids today say, it's giving, it's giving Atari. And yeah, actually, before I get any angry corrections down in the comments, this is technically a Sears telegames video arcade system, but it was made by Atari in an Atari factory, but it was just labeled Sears because reasons. Pew, 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 pew. Actually, the more time I spend with the GS10, the more I'm reminded of those science fair electronics workshop things that Radio Shack used to sell. I know right now the under 40 crowd is getting really confused, but there were these toy consoles full of resistors and capacitors and switches and buzzers and transformers. And the idea was that you would connect the wires between these various components and build circuits for things like an AM radio, a lie detector, a countdown timer, or a doorbell. And I definitely remember using a buzzer and a photo cell connected to a length of speaker wire run down the hallway to let me know when someone was walking towards my room. I always thought that was kind of clever. And I kind of wonder how many of today's prominent amp and pedal builders got their start on one of those things. Obviously, the GS10 is built for tabletop operation. It can plug into an amp. It can plug into a mixer. It can plug into a recorder with a coax digital input. That used to be a thing. And it's even got USB for recording directly into a computer. At least, I assume that used to work. I couldn't get it working on my M1 MacBook, and I didn't really feel like forcing the drivers. I have a theory that this wasn't meant for the musician to go out and buy and carry around with them, but rather for a church or a performing arts camp or radio station or a school, a, a place where people are going to stop by and play guitar every once in a while, where it's just not feasible to set up and mic an amplifier every single time, but they also want something that sounds a little bit better than just plugging straight into the board. As for the sound, yeah, it's absolutely stone age compared to today's software and even floor units that are coming out. In fact, according to the Sweetwater NAM 2003 write-up for this thing, it says that this is based on the GT6, not even the GT8. But it's got something that you can't get from a plug-in. Speakers. Yeah, it's not loud enough to gig with, they're just for you to hear yourself playing, but you can plop this down on the kitchen table and rock out while you make dinner. And you can bet that if I had a sponsorship from HelloFresh right now, we'd be talking about how much I love these easy to make meal kits, but I don't. So instead, I wanna tell you about how the GS10 works for bass guitar just as well as it does for normal guitar, with a whole bunch of emulated bass amps that aren't actually too bad. So here's a few of my favorites. So guitar, bass, but look at this, XLR input. 
Yeah, you can plug a microphone into this and then use those effects on your voice. Pinch hitting, Pinch hitting for Pedro, Pedro Borbon. Manny, Manny Mota. Mota. All right, but for real, do I think the Boss GS10 makes much sense in the year 2023 and beyond? Well, aside from those heavier distortions, yeah, actually, and I would love to see a return to this form factor or something like it. And I know people are gonna say, oh, you can do all that with a laptop and a few plugins, but not everyone feels like investing in an interface and a DAW and plugins, or even a laptop for that matter. And I dig the tabletop design, I really do. It $495 new, at least that's what it looks like it cost. Um, it wasn't absurdly expensive when it came out, but I just think there wasn't an audience for it. There was never a GS20, let's just put it that way. I guess there is the JS10, and that seems more like it's just like a portable stereo that you can plug into, almost like a guitar karaoke machine. I guess the modern day version of this is, capability-wise, the Boss Katana Air. I'll say this for the GS10. It's capable without being distracting or overwhelming. There's just enough here where I don't get into that option paralysis rabbit hole where I spend my whole half hour of free time figuring out how many stages I want in my phaser instead of actually writing a song or practicing that solo. There's definitely $140 worth of effects and capabilities in here. So even if it's not perfect, it's still interesting. I'll catch you on the next one.